Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuation here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question five to the Jan 2019 POA paper two. If you want to see the other solutions for this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So let's get into the question. All right, so it says here that Total Health Solutions is a supplier of health food products. At 31st December 2018, the following information was extracted from its statement of financial position, its balance sheet. So if we take a look at this information here, um, can we zoom in a little bit? All right, so what we're seeing, we're seeing non-current assets, a total, all right, uh, inventory, receivables, cash, and then we add together and have total assets, okay? Current liabilities, so accounts payable, bank overdraft, all right? So finance by capital, net income for the year, 268, all right. So if we add up these four things, we're supposed to get the 260, because remember assets, assets equal to liabilities plus capital, right? So it says here, additional information provided. So the opening inventory at Jan 18, so that's your opening stock, and you have purchases and revenue for the year, okay. So using the information provided for total health solutions, calculate each of the following three ratios show all working clearly okay let's see what they want they want the current ratio the inventory turnover and the asset test ratio and that's that's 13 marks wow okay so let's take it one one thing at a time so the first thing they want is the current ratio which is total current assets divided by total current liability so let's go across on this side so we have calculation of current ratio so current assets 148 how did i get 148 I added together the three current assets, so inventory, receivables, and cash, and then I have to divide that by current liabilities. How do I get that? Well, I have a whole section marked current liabilities down here, so I just add 53 and 60, and I get 118, 113, sorry, and I get 1.31 to 1. So this tells me how many dollars of current assets exist to pay off every dollar, every one or single dollar of current liabilities. So currently, I have, um, <laughs> no pun intended, I have an extra 31 cents available um, <clears throat> after I pay off every dollar of current liabilities. All right, um, next, what did they want after that? They had calculation of inventory turnover. This is also known as the rate of stock turn, rate of stock turnover. And the formula is cost of goods sold divided by average stock. So to get cost of goods sold, right? I hope you know your income statement, all right? Uh, <laughs> So we have our opening inventory. So that's why they gave us the opening inventory down here. Opening inventory plus the purchases, all right? Now, I don't suppose we have any returns out or carriage in, so I don't think we have to worry about that. So we're going to add those two together. That's going to give us the cost of goods available for sale, and we're going to have to minus closing stock. The stock in the balance sheet up there, that is the stock at the, at what date? 31st December 2018. So that's stock at the end of the year. So that's your closing stock. So we're gonna divide by that, oops, sorry, right? That item and, sorry, not divide, we're gonna subtract that item <laughs> and get 53, that, that's your cost of goods sold. Now we have to divide by average stock. What is average stock? How do you find the average of two items? You add them together and then divide by two. So opening stock was the 63, all right? The closing stock was the 90, so we're gonna add those two things together and then divide by two. So 63 and 90 is 153, uh, divided by 2 is 76,500. And when we do that division, we get 0.69 times. Now what this ratio tells us is the number of times during the year we sold out our average stock. So we didn't even sell out our stock one time. So that, that could be a problem. <laughs> All right, and the last thing they wanted was the calculation of the acid test ratio. So the acid test ratio is, as they say, a more stringent or harsher test of liquidity. Um, it's a kind of stress, a stress testing situation to see, can the company pay off its current liabilities using only, sorry, using current assets except for its inventory? Why do we exclude inventory? Because inventory is the least liquid current asset. It's never bound to be sold. So if you were in a worst case scenario situation, you couldn't sell your stock, could you pay off your current liabilities with what you had in your current assets above. Let's take a look. So we're gonna add those two current assets, 45 and 13 is 58, and the current liabilities is still 113,000, which gives 0.51 to one. So we, it's, this is almost 50 cents to one. So 
we have just over 50 cents to pay off every dollar that we owe. That's not a good position to be in, right? As I mentioned in my previous video, there are variations on the formula for asset test ratio. If, you, if and when you go up to Form 6 accounting, you might learn a formula which is um, cash and bank, well, cash and cash equivalents, plus um, marketable securities, short-term investments, plus um, receivables, net receivables, and divide that by current liabilities, right? There are different formulas in different um, texts, but at the end of it, it's, like I said, it's a stress test for liquidity. Okay, so let's let's scroll down and let's see um, what else we have to do. So it says here, um, let's scroll across a little bit so we see all of the words. Right, so Carry Health Foods is a similar business which also supplies health food products. It provides its ratios calculated for the year ended 31st December 2018 as follows. So the same three ratios, right? So current ratio, inventory turnover, asset test. So compare the ratios with from total health that you have with the carry health above. All right, which entity is better able to meet its, short, its, its immediate short-term obligations? In other words, its current liabilities. Which company is in a better position in terms of current liabilities? And it says immediate short-term obligations because we have two ratios that measure short-term liquidity. We have the current ratio, right? Now for, sorry, current ratio, right? Which for carry health is 1.09 to 1. But for total health, it's, it's sorry, 1.31. So total health wins in that section. But you see this, this extra, extra word, immediate short-term obligations? That makes me think we, we, we need to look at the asset test ratio. So for um, carry health, it's 0.87 to 1. So still not, not great, but it's better than 0.51 to 1. <laughs> So they have 87 cents to pay off each dollar of current liabilities and we only have 51 cents. So I think it's, it's, it's easy to say that Carry Health is better prepared to meet its immediate short-term obligations. Um, part two says, suggest one reason for your answer above. Well, I'm basing it on it has a best, better asset test ratio. Now, somebody may very well disagree and say, no, we should use the current ratio. Well, I, th I think here they were, they were more looking for how you justify your answer as opposed to a one and done right answer. Um, but the, the accountant in me would always go on the side of prudence, as in the worst case scenario, and in which case I would definitely look at the asset test as opposed to the current ratio. All right, um, let's see what else we have here. So it says, make one recommendation that a business could, could consider to enable it to improve on its asset test position. To improve on your asset test position, you have to improve your current assets. Right, as it increase them or decrease your current liabilities. Now, to decrease your current liabilities, you have to pay back. So you're gonna be taking money from your current assets to pay back your current liabilities. So that might not actually help your asset test ratio because imagine we try to do that in the current situation. Eventually, we'll get to a position where we run out of current assets to pay the current liabilities. You're gonna get a zero to one for the, the asset test ratio. So. To me, the other thing and the better thing to do would be to increase your current assets. And more specifically, you have to increase your cash and or your receivables. To do that, you have to make more sales, cash and or credit. All right, so that's actually my suggestion uh, in my thing here. Sorry, it's scrolling too fast. A business could increase its sales, both cash and credit, in order to improve its asset test ratio position. Because if you increase cash sales, your cash is going to go up if you increase your credit sales, your receivables is going to go up and hopefully eventually your cash will as well when you collect your debtors. And then you could use that extra, well, the new cash to pay off your current liabilities. All right. Uh, and across here now it says, name one ratio which can be used, sorry, to assess the profitability of the business. All right, the gross margin, net margin, return on capital employed, and there are several others as well. Okay. Now, the last question on this paper, it says, use the information provided in the statement of financial position for total health solutions to calculate the operating expenses for the year. Show all working clearly. Well, I had I, had, I said, I mean, I know I, I've answered the question already, but um, what? We have to find out the operating expenses. Okay, let's, let's take a look. This is interesting. I, I like when questions cause me to pause and think. Okay, so how are we gonna figure this out? Well, we have net income. And we know net income 
is your net profit or your profit after you've subtracted your expenses. So if it's profit after we've subtracted expenses, the profit before that is gross profit. So if we were able to find gross profit and we have net profit, what would happen? Well, the missing figure would be the expenses. Can we find gross profit? Well, we found cost of goods sold higher up when we had to find the rate of stock turn, didn't we? And if we have cost of goods sold, all we have to do is subtract that from the sales revenue. And guess what they, would, they did? They were kind enough to give us the sales revenue for the year down here. So, there we go. All right, so let's, let's, we're going to scroll back up um, just to make sure that you guys see we have the cost of goods sold here, 53000 All right, and all we have to do now is pull that 250 So total health solutions, calculation of operating expenses for the year ended 31st December 2018. Right, so revenue minus cost of goods sold is gross profit. Gross profit minus net profit is the expenses. Right, so I like, I like that. It makes you think differently because we're so accustomed thinking in one direction, we don't realize we could go in different directions. And it's very important you learn to think outside the box or not along straight lines all the time. You can color outside the lines, right? Okay, ladies and gents, that's about it for this question. Um, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the other playlist I'm going to put up there. And don't forget to subscribe and check out my website for free POA handouts, all right? So um, thanks again for watching. Stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.